Joining us right now is Kevin Mandia. He's the CEO of Mandiant and former CEO of FireEye. And, and Kevin, let's let's dig into this. How big of a deal are these new SEC regulations? Hmm. You know, it's a great question, but we're not. But, you know, we're familiar with SEC regulation. They did staff guidance in 2011. They did some interpretation of that staff guidance for cybersecurity regulations in 2018. And I can tell you, this will have, in my opinion, look at the Fortune 100. They're already doing a lot of what's in this guidance. So this is more about the other 7,000 registrants and how they should be thinking about cybersecurity rules and how they should be reporting it to their investors. But that's my long-winded way of saying, for the bigs, this is not a surprise. They're already doing much of what the new rules su suggest. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the smalls and the mids, this is something that they may have to consider. Are, are the critics right in that they think that it's going to make them give too much information that would leave them open to other hackers? Uh, you know, I don't think so. When you, you know, it's 186 pages, by the way, and I read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And there was 150 different entities that commented on the proposed rules, and they did change based on the inputs from those 150 folks. Okay. So that point was brought up. Hey, if we disclose all the technical evidence, first, our investors may not be able to understand it all if we have a breach and we get too technical. And second, we may show the very doorways and avenues into our networks that the hackers use in the first place. So it's very clear in these rules, you don't need to go into the technical details and that you just talk about the material impact or the, that you believe there will be material impact on your business processes. You can leave out the critical details that hackers can take advantage of uh, and, and try to breach you down the road. I, I mean, on some level, I, I've always thought that there were a lot more hacks taking place than we ever hear mm -hmm. about, and maybe this is good. I, I know this is the SEC doing it for clarity mm -hmm. to investors and transparency to investors, but maybe it helps with all of us having a better understanding of, of mm -hmm. who the bad actors are, where they're getting, and just to you know, not have a false sense of security. Well, you know, when I read it, it looked like the reason they did it is we want more timely notification for the investor community. We have lots of notifications to the cybersecurity infrastructure and security agency, you know, where we have to report to them. We have FTC rules. We have different state privacy rules. When you look at all the ways, if you suffer a breach, you may have to disclose, this is yet another one, and you still have to do it, and it's for a different audience, the investors. So I think they did these rules to standardize what is reported as well as get more timeliness in any of the disclosures. So the content of our disclosures will also be uh, more similar in the future. It, are they right, the critics, in, in suggesting that it's going to leave them open to lawsuits, that there's going to be plaintiff's attorneys that are just yeah. trolling, looking for lawsuits to throw their direction? Well, there's no doubt. You know, when you're breached and you know it, and I've lived through this thousands of times with organizations, Every detail that you put out there, a lot of times, unfortunately, is block copied into, you know, and plaintiff attorneys take advantage of it. The reality is, uh, when you look at all the reporting disclosure rules, you open yourself up to some of that no matter what. If you're hacked and you know it, it is more probable than that you're going to be sued.